Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. I'm going to have a look at a puzzle that's been sent in to us today. Now, we do get dozens of requests for uh, puzzles that viewers think would make interesting ones for us to solve on the channel. Um, I'm going to be honest and say that um, the chances are much better for people who've sponsored us on Patreon to uh, get their videos shown, partly just because we get so many requests. Um, and this one was sent in by uh, Jens Mullenhoff, who's, uh, who is a patron on Patreon, and uh, he says he's been using a new app, or an app called uh, Privacy Friendly Sudoku on Android, and uh, at the fourth level, which seems to be the hardest, it's really generating some ones that are giving him headaches, and he's included this one for us to have a look at. So I'm going to have a go at this puzzle and see how it goes. You can also try it, the, um, the URL to solving it in our software is down below. So do have a go first before watching me have a go if you want, and uh, we'll see how we get on. So down at the bottom, we've got some ones. So I'm going to be using Snyder notation as usual. The only two places in this box where ones can go are these two cells because of this one, this one, and this one. So that's kind of how I'm going to be doing notation. Twos, very similar basis. Uh, threes down here, that's got to be a three. Um, over in this box, there's quite a few restrictions. Sevens must be there. That must be six. That puts a six here. Sixes are going in. That's quite useful. We get a pair of possible sixes there. Oh, no, that's a six. And so a pair there. So the last two sixes in the grid are in, the, in that box of two by two in some order. Now, four in column seven must be there. And that fixes this whole box now, which is a good start. Puzzle's not looking too difficult at the moment, but I expect we'll come across the bit where Jens struggles later. Um, eight and five must both be down here somewhere. Five is either there or there. Actually, five over here is one of those two. One. One is fixed by this one and this one, so that resolves the five, and we're left with an eight and nine pair in that box. Uh, five is one of those two down in the bottom box. Three is now fixed up here. Six, seven, three. Um, any of those could be four, though. Oh, that three pushes three over here. That's nice. Eight. Ah, eight. Look, because of this eight, nine pair here, eight is now forced into the same cells as five over here. So that's a five, eight pair, and everything else is ruled out of those two cells. So look, nine again in this row, so that must be there. And two, one. Okay. Two up here to finish the columns. Same here for a four. We've got a one nine pair up at the top. It's going along quite nicely at the moment. Three. That's probably the last three in the grid. Um, and oh, in fact, sorry, this five eight pair is resolved by that one. So sorry about that. Didn't really need that uh, thinking about it at all. Six is there, two is there, and one of these is a nine as well. This is seven and four. So we've got a one eight pair there. Um, what else have we got going on? Seven. Oh, yeah, look, that's a six, seven pair as well. I mean, we're getting quite close to a finish here. Um, that's not a four anymore. Oh, this is quite interesting. This box must be either two or nine. That's the only possibilities left from its row and box. 
this one, well, from this row, in fact, both this cell and this cell must be 2, 9. And look, just below that cell, that's also 2, 9. So that's a 2, 9 pair in this row. Hmm, does that resolve anything? Not immediately. But I might depart from the Snyder notation and fill in that that's a 2, 9 and that's a 2, 9, just because having discovered it, it might turn out to be useful, I feel. Um, 2 is there. In fact, this is 8 or 9 here as well. And this is, now oh, that is interesting. That's 8 or 9 because 6, 7, 3, 4, 1 in its row, two in its box, say, and five in its column. So eight and nine are all that's left. And in column seven here, we've only got eight and nine left. So that's an eight, nine pair. These two are five, two. And this one is now eight or nine as well. And whichever it is, that's going to make it eight or nine up here as well. In fact, that completes that column. So that is an eight, nine pair there. Um, sevens and sixes we've isolated. Fives are in either this cell or this cell. Fours. Oh, yeah, look, we've got two fours in the columns of this central run of boxes. Twos are a little harder to isolate, but as well as the two there, could have a two there or there. Um, ah, look, this cell here. One, two, three, four in its column, five, six, seven in its row. This is either eight or nine, and that's important because this cell is also eight or nine from its column. So we've got an eight, nine pair across the top here. And what that does for us is it definitely resolves that one, nine combination. One is now in one of those two cells. Um, have I failed to fill in any possibilities here? That couldn't be a two after all, because that was a six, seven pair. So two is there or there. One there or there. Three, four, five. I might be missing something here. Yes, that could be an eight. In fact, eight could be in any of those three. Yeah, okay. But those are all the possibilities in this in this three by three box now. We've got them all filled in. And up here, that's eight or nine. That's two or nine. This is four or eight. And this can't be eight or nine because, again, we've got the pair up there. So this is four or two. And all those possibilities are filled in. Um, down here, we've got seven in one of those two and a five in one of those two. But now... I think this may be the point where it gets tricky. And let's see what we can spot in the rest of the grid. You know, well done if there's something you can see from this point. Um, I'm guessing this is where it gets hard in this puzzle. Six, seven. So, Something with these, surely with all these eight, nine combinations out here. Ah, now look, right. If this was an eight, that makes an eight here. Right, so let's freeze that as yellow. That's an eight. That becomes an eight. This must become an eight. This can't be an eight. In fact, there's nowhere left in column eight for an eight now. So that's not possible. So that can't be an 8. And by exactly the same token, this can't be an 8. It would make this an 8. Again, this would be an 8. And the two squares, the two cells in column 8, which have an 8, would both be ruled out. So that can't be an 8 either. So 8 is now in one of those two. In fact, every cell in this box, apart from the given 3, is now one of a pair. Um, and... What can we do next up here? Um, again, I still think these eight nines are very powerful. 
they surely hold some sort of key. Or maybe this 2-9 combination that we saw earlier. All of these could possibly be 8 or 9 at the moment. Um, where can we find some traction here? Now, there must be something going on here. What What is there happening here that we can pick off as well? I'm sure that restricting those... Oh, yes, that couldn't be an 8 because we restricted 8 to that pair. Um, so 7 is down there. Yes, this is interesting. I think I'm seeing something possible here. So, if, if this was an 8 here, down here, that would make this an 8. And what's interesting about that pair of eights is they would make this a one and this a four and this cell would become impossible. So that is not an eight. That's a nine. And that surely will get us to the end of this puzzle. Um, the nines and eights having been resolved in the, this box up at the top especially. That's huge. So surely uh, that lets us finish off almost everything in this box apart from the 6-7 pair. And that resolves the 8-1 there. 7-8-5 uh, to go in here, so that must be like that. Yes, look at that finish. That's a very neat little puzzle with quite a twist in the tail. I mean, it was towards... It was a nice solve, and then as we got towards the end, it suddenly got very tricky. But... A couple of little, just little bits of logic. I think those were mostly empty rectangles, although I'm never quite sure. I'm afraid I don't solve quite as scientifically precisely as Simon. But, uh, you know, to me, those are kind of logic chains, but with not very many squares to visualize happily when, when we crack through it. So congratulations if you found that puzzle not difficult at all. I think that felt fairly advanced and... I'm certainly happy to take Jens's word for it that it's a tough puzzle. Thanks very much to him for sending it in. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.